Let me talk a little bit about why we are where we are, and then we can take it from there. Uh, we got into this era with a very uh, strong rate of growth, almost unprecedented growth, and a lot of it because of the emerging market development models and a lot of it because of globalization. But as a result of that, we also had some very significant global imbalances. Savings rates in the U.S. versus savings in the East, uh, government deficits, budget deficit, trade deficits, a lot of leverage coming into it. So specifically, we entered this era of growth uh, and then exited towards the crisis with some very, very large imbalances. In addition to that, roughly half of the financial system in the U.S. was unregulated or lightly regulated, and we had a large shadow banking system, which actually became a huge source of funding for both legitimate and, for that matter, questionable economic purposes. And the impact as a result of that was a disconnect between credit creation and GDP growth. And when you put it all together, I think the major point is that the primary drivers of growth that brought into this crisis were U.S. consumption, which created a lot of the imbalances, and a lot of credit creation. And that these are unlikely to be the drivers of growth taking us out of this crisis or creating a new cycle of growth for us. It turns out, by the way, in the years leading up to the crisis, um, uh, credit in the U.S. grew at about three times GDP growth rate in the U.S. Now, we know that's not sustainable, and we've seen the results of that, but very likely credit is going to have to grow at the same rate as GDP growth or somewhere close enough to that going forward. So to generate and sustain global growth, we're going to have to going to fuel it, and uh, again, as with prior crises, the factors that brought us into this crisis are unlikely to be ones taking us out, which is U.S. consumption and credit creation are not what's going to drive growth. Now, we believe emerging markets offer one potentially powerful source of growth. In fact, we all know that they're growing at a significant multiple to the developed markets at this point, and the other is globalization. Let me spend a little bit of time on both. Uh, the growth dynamics in the emerging markets are quite interesting because they are a largely self-contained model. They have strong domestic consumption, and they can have and have an ability to have st strong domestic consumption that, that's based on diversified consumer populations. And by the way, the flow of trade and capital within these emerging markets can be extremely uh, strong. If you look at the Asian economies, the Asian economies are growing at about two to three times faster rate than developed markets. And by the way, trade volumes within the region reached $9 trillion in 2008. So they are self-contained in terms of that growth dynamics. And they are a driver of growth. Now, the other trend is globalization. And while this trend with, has been with us for a while, the fact is that as these growth areas, the consumers around the emerging markets do develop, they're going to create consumer bases for U.S. companies and Western companies to export to, just as we were the markets for them to export to us. And so, in general, we believe globalization is also going to be a very strong trend driving growth. And that's because of the fact that the rise of diversified and strong consumer bases around the world will have multinationals and global institutions think about how to capitalize on these new consumer bases, and the supply and demand chains for producers will, give it, will become even more global, uh, and the result of that is likely to be um, more trade and more flow. Now, these are two strong and viable factors of growth that I believe we can count on going forward. But the conundrum is that if we're going to rely only on the emerging markets and globalization, as the forces to drive growth, they may not be enough or not be sufficient enough in the near term to really drive sufficient sustainable growth for a period of time for the West. And that, I think, is a real conundrum. Uh, and we know that today, it turns out the fiscal and monetary policies are filling the gaps. So the real question, I guess, for growth is that with the developing market being the locus of, locus of growth, the question is whether we in the West can find sufficient ways to supplement that, find our own new growth models, 
And don't forget, we're going to have to do that while addressing the structural imbalances at the same time. Now, that is a difficult challenge. Now, these imbalances, by the way, are quite evident when you look at the indebtedness of the American consumer. The American consumer accumulated impact had the, their personal indebtedness go up from 100% off net income in the year 2000 to a peak of about 130% of net income in 2008. In eight years, a 30% increase. And you see that with the governments. Obviously, governments have had to spend a lot of money uh, in order to help us through this crisis. And it turns out there are many, many uh, countries in the developed world uh, that are going to have debt that's projected to be over 100% of GDP. And then in some cases, deficits are approaching over 10% of the GDP. Now, this is away from issues like in the US, where you have a real state uh, and local government deficit as well, as they are facing the same problems that the sovereign governments are uh, facing. So as we think about sustainable models of growth away from the emerging markets to the developed markets, it's really hard to imagine any sustainable growth model that doesn't address these basic imbalances.